right you guys i've kind of been thinking about this photo we on part three of relentless girl it's gonna be good it's gonna be hold on let me take a bite of my pizza y'all i made some pizza look at this look at that pizza hold on i'm hungry mmm mmm girl you can cook all right y'all i thought about it i don't know if i have enough content to push out 10 minutes <clears throat> but we're gonna make it do okay so mina is surprised and yeah just to let y'all know her real name is jasmine but they nick you know you know black people we got nicknames so they call her mina so anyway <clears throat> um mina just got home from a night out on the town with her good friend courtney while she was there mr paul just so happened to be there and he bought her a drink and that's when Courtney was like, ooh, sis, I like Mr. Salt and Pepper over there. <laughs> you know, Paul has aged gracefully. He's one of those men that gets better with time, girl. His looks get better as he gets older. So he's pushing 50 now. Anyway, Mina arrived home to find that her husband Quentin has returned early from his business trip to surprise her for her 30th birthday party. They embrace in a hug while they are making out girl um she gets a phone call so she you know answers her call her cell phone and it is her um one of her co-workers letting her know that the house is ready for her to show paul the next day and so she just you know making small talk with quentin and he's like well why is, is she calling you so late she's like oh she's just you know confirming that this estate is ready for me to show um uh, my client in the morning she's like you know it's odd. i got someone coming all the way from la looking at houses i just find that kind of odd of all places he chooses this small little town you know out in georgia and that's when Quentin said, you know, well, maybe, you know, some people want to change your scenery. She said, yeah, but apparently he was a bit shot director in the 80s. And that's when Quentin turned around curious and he's like, what's his name again? And she said, Paul, um, I believe a Paul Winthrop. And Quentin looked at her kind of quiet and said, hmm. That's interesting. And so she's like, yeah, isn't that odd? He's like, yeah, that is odd. So anyway, girl, they, the hell was that? Ooh. <laughs> Jesus. So anyway, y'all, <laughs> they have a hot and steamy night because unfortunately, y'all, this lighting, did y'all see that? Sorry, y'all. They have a hot and steamy night because unfortunately, Quentin has to go back out um, the next uh morning you know he returned early for the business trip but he has to go back out again so mina's going ahead and getting up and she sees him off um he said that he has to probably take a couple of stops in town before he heads on out and she's like okay honey you know um give me a call whenever you reach your destination he says so oh, i'm sure so mina's getting you know zaire together her little chocolate dip getting the baby together to drop her off over her um grandmother's house and mina really wants to put Zaire and um, child care not just so she could have interaction with other children but to give her grandmother a break her grandmother is 82 years old you know and she's at this point she doesn't need to be caring for her child so anyway she's getting Zaire together to drop her off she jumps into the car and she cranks her car and she noticed that her car isn't cranking and she's like you have got to be kidding me i just got a new battery what is wrong so she keeps calling keeps keeps trying keeps trying it's not cranking up the baby's in the back and she said what's wrong mama she's like just a second zaya there's something wrong with the car so she calls her grandmother and tell her that you know it's gonna be a couple of minutes soon until she could figure out what's going on um that's when she calls paul and says look paul you know there's something wrong with my car um i will have to reschedule and he's like you know what that's okay i can come in and pick you up and that's when Mina was like are you sure he's like yeah i'll come pick you up it's not a problem um so mina goes ahead and makes arrangements to have um her neighbor to drop off zaire at her grandmother's house and she stays there and waits for um paul to come and pick her up right so let's cut to quentin quentin gets in his car and he picks up his cell phone and he's dialing a number we have no idea who he's talking to and so he's like yeah i need for you to meet me at the corner of 35th and shay girl i don't know that's even that's here in phoenix but whatever i need for you to meet me at the corner of 35th and shay in about 10 minutes you need to be there so quentin shows up and he's walking around the parking lot and that's when he hears a voice behind him says hey what's up baby q 
turns around and there is Paul. Y'all, I'm so excited. I'm sorry, okay. Child, there is Paul looking at him, walking towards Quentin. And Quentin's looking at him, he's like, what are you doing here? And that's when Paul is like, is this any way to talk to your older brother? So, child, they are siblings. And I'm gonna give y'all the tea behind what really is going on though about that. So Quentin's looking upset. He's like, you always supposed to call me before you get in town. So what happened? He's like, well, you know, um, He's like, well, you know, um, mom died. And so Quentin looked at him and said, that was not my mama. He's like, well, don't be like that, baby Q. So y'all, the background is, is that Quentin was adopted, okay? He was adopted to this family, but when he found out what was going on as a teenager, he left. Um, Paul, the reason why they have different last names is that the entire town they grew up in found out about the relationship between Paul and his mother and Quentin was dumb. He didn't want he didn't want to have anything to do with that. So he went through an entire process as he got older to change his name, change his identity. Every now and then he would talk to Paul just to say hi whatever but he really cut off any type of relationships with that side of his family so that is the background there so quentin is upset he's like you're supposed to always call me when you come in town or whatever so what are you doing here so so paul is like well i was coming to see if you can give me back that money i loaned you and Quentin's looking at it. He's like, man, what are you talking about the money I loaned you? That was an investment that you squandered. So that wasn't a loan. And Quentin is like, and what is this I'm hearing about you looking at estates and looking at houses here? And so Paul is like, well, you know, I sold my house back in LA. And so I'm thinking about, you know, moving out this way. He's like, man, you've got to be kidding me. I'm on my way out of town, but we need to meet up and discuss this in detail when I return. So Paul is like smiling mischievously. He said, why didn't you tell me you got married, baby Q? That's when Quentin turned around. He's like, you know what? You need to stay away from my wife. He's like, I'm just wanting her to show me some places. What's the harm in that? He said, you sh she can show you the places, but after that, I'm going to try to come up with some money. I know that's all you want is some money. So I'm going to give you the money. And after that, you need to bounce. You need to leave town. Paul has this smug smile on his face the entire time, y'all. Because he's loving this. You know, he's narcissistic. So he really saw, he knew what where Quentin was all this time. He knew that Quentin had gotten married. He knew that Mina was a real estate agent. He had this all planned out right. So he's like, I'm just going to have her to show me a house. And I promise you, your wife is safe with me <laughs> so anyway you know Quentin gets upset he leaves but he makes it he makes it known to Paul that when he gets back they're gonna have to discuss this and he needs to leave town he doesn't need to be he does not need to be standing around Quentin does not want him there you know so anyway Paul jumps into his little car and he heads out. Now, Quentin doesn't know this, honey. He heads out to go pick up Mina because, again, her car has broken down. Mina is leaning up against her car um, on the phone with a um, her insurance company to see if they can tow her car to a dealership or whatever so they can get a look at it. So Paul stops and he gets out the car. He opens up the door and Mina's like, hmm. So she gets in and he's like, what's wrong with your car? You, you, did you know what's wrong with it? She's like, I have no idea. We just had the ba battery um, switched out a couple of weeks ago. And so I don't know why it's, you know, why it's not working, but thank you so much for picking me up. He's like, not a problem. He's like, excuse me. He leans over the glove department and gets something. So his hand kind of brushes Mina's knees and she kind of gets flustered. He's like, excuse me, pardon me. So anyway, she's like, oh, that's it's okay. So she kind of moves, you know, adjusts herself in a seat. So he grabs um, some type of paperwork and he puts it in the back seat. So Mina thought that was kind of odd, right? So they take off to this other estate that Paul wanted to look at. And now this particular house is more so in town as opposed to the other one that they saw the previous day, right? So they go through the house and Mina can tell that he's really not that interested. So she turns around. She's like, you know what? I can tell just based on your, your body language that you're really not feeling this house. So... Are you wanting to view any of the other houses that we have on the list or are you okay with the first one? <clears throat> so Paul looks at her and kind of smiles and says, oh, you're good. 
Nina, I'm um, sorry, Mina takes that as a compliment. So on the way back to the car, Paula's like, okay, so you know what? Um, I don't know if you have anything planned later on today, but perhaps, you know, are you hungry? Would you like to uh, go out for a bite to eat? And Mina turned around. She's kind of shocked by that because she knows that he knows she's married. And so Paul, again, child, Paul already knows that what she's thinking. So he's like, look, this is just strictly platonic. We're just going out to have something to eat. I respect you, you know, you're married. I'm not trying to do that. I'm not trying to go there with you. You know, maybe this could be an opportunity for us to discuss some other um some other houses or, or state properties that you have here. And so Mina kind of looked at me and she thought about it. She's like, Yeah, I'm actually I'm kind of hungry. So they decide to stop by a um local <coughs> excuse me, a local diner to have um i guess you would call it lunch it's, it's still a morning time but they decided to stop by a local diner to have some lunch so on the way there um mina is feeling a little unsure she's like why am i double guessing this this is just a business lunch basically um we're just gonna you know discuss some other properties she's okay so he opens up the door for her he's a complete gentleman y'all and see you know she gets into the car and they head off to the diner they get to the diner and Mina's looking at the uh, menu. <clears throat> so he's like, have you, you know, I'm pretty sure you've been here before. What would you recommend? And so Mina's looking at the menu. Now, mind y'all, she still hasn't dropped those 20 pounds that she gained with Zaire. Girl, it's been four years now. She ain't gonna lose that weight. <laughs> so Mina's looking at the menu and she's like, well... I would recommend a chicken fried steak, but considering I'm really trying to watch what I eat, and that's when Paul puts the menu down, he's like, what are you saying? She's like, yeah, I need to lose another 20, 25 pounds. And he's like, look, I understand you women have certain parts of your body that you get stuck on and you want to change, but me looking at you, I don't think there's anything about you that you need to change. Again, no disrespect. And so Mina looks at him and she kind of blushes y'all. She's like, oh, she's like, I understand what you're saying. Thank you. But I could stand to lose 20 pounds. And so Paul looks at her and said, okay, well, if you want to eat a little rabbit salad and watch me eat this chicken fried steak, then that's on you. So Mina looks at him and starts smiling. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and get the chicken fried steak. And so they start laughing over there, right, y'all? So they're having friendly conversation and this entire time, nothing about the different estates, or excuse me, the different prop properties that Paul was interested in. They're just talking and talking. And Mina finds herself, she hasn't had a conversation like this with another another man, excuse me, in a very long time. Um and so, you know, their their food arrives, they eat. Paul notices that she looks down at her watch and he's like, I'm so sorry, I probably have kept you um, away way too long. And so Mina's like, no, it's okay, but yeah, I do gotta get back to the office, I really do. So they finish up, he pays for their lunch and he drops her off and they, you know, she makes it known to him that she will be in contact and he's like, okay, great. So y'all, a, a couple of days go by <clears throat> and Mina arrives at work and she noticed child paul ain't shit she noticed that there are roses sitting on her desk and so now she's thinking oh my god quentin is too much not only did he surprise her for her birthday by coming in but now he's giving her some roses so she heads over to her desk she um picks up the card like girl these are the pretend these are roses this is the card <laughs> she picks up the card and she's like and then she gave her a coworker behind her. She's like, you have the sweetest husband. She's like, he is so sweet. She opens it up, child. The flowers are for Paul, not from Quentin. Thank you for a lovely lunch. Um, I hope to see you again soon. And so Mina closes it real quick. And so her coworker behind her says, Aw, you don't want to share what your hubby sent you? And so Mina turns around. She's like, oh no, it's it's same old same old you know wishing me a happy birthday and telling me how much he loves me and so mina turns back around she looks back at the flowers and she's like oh my god and she figured you know what this is harmless i'm gonna go ahead and just send him a quick text letting him know that i got the flowers and i appreciate it and just basically thank you you know so she sends a text and basically says um thank you for the flowers mina that's it and he immediately responds you guys he's basically like 
um you're very welcome i can't wait to meet with you again that's it and mina looks down at it and you guys mina starts she starts feeling a little flustered she's like i cannot be feeling this way over another man like what is wrong with me she's like okay you know what i need to view this strictly as business okay stop it you know i can't be thinking like this I can't be, my mind can't be going there. I need to, you know, this needs to be strictly business. The next time we talk, just keep it strictly business. Don't go out to eat. Don't even accept any flowers or anything like that. So that's what she has in her, that's what she's telling herself, y'all. She's coaching herself into that, right? Couple of days later, Mina ends up meeting him again and they go back to the other estate, right? The first one um, that was like five bedrooms, three and a half baths. And so her car is fixed and find out if there was something wrong with a knob on the battery. So girl, she was able to drive down there. He didn't need to come up and, and pick her up this time. So they meet up at the house and so she's like, so um, what do you think? I think that this is going to be it for you. And so he's like, yep, you got me figured out. She's like, okay, so what you could do is come by later on and we can figure out the paperwork. Um, are you okay with that? He's like, or why can't we do this, you know, fairly soon? I really want to go ahead and get the paperwork out the way. Out the way. If you're not doing anything tonight, I was going to be heading down to that lounge, you know, that I saw you at, at on your birthday. Um, maybe you could bring the paperwork there, dinner, strictly dinner, and we can go ahead and get this, you know, uh, seal this deal, basically. And so Mina's looking at him. And so, and he notices that she's hesitant. He's like, you know what? I understand. We can go come back um, a couple more days. And she's like, you know, no, 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 actually... It's okay because in the back of Mina's head, again, this is the first house she has actually sold um, in a couple of weeks, you guys. So she really wants to go ahead and, you know, get this done too. So she's like, okay. She's like, no, 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 that's that's fine. I was just hesitating, just trying to figure out what I have going on later on. Girl, she ain't got a dang old thing going on later <laughs> on. So she's like, okay, that's fine. So he's like, okay, I can stop by and pick you up if you want. He's, she's like, no, 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 that won't be necessary. I can meet you there. He's, you know, he's like, okay, that's perfectly fine. So they agreed to meet at the restaurant at seven o'clock on the way to go pick up her little girl Zaire. Mina's thoughts are racing. She's like, I need to stop this. This is just a bis. Again, this is a business dinner. But oh my God, Mina could not stop thinking about when he brushed past her and she could smell his. Oh Lord, child. He was wearing Chanel Allure. Girl, Paul smelled expensive and like good credit, but he, girl, he really got bad credit. But anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so Mina was like, oh my gosh. She's like, so no, 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 no. I'm going to, you know, dress very, very, very conservative. Um, This is not a date. This is just a business dinner. But as she's driving home, a part of her is very excited to be having this dinner. Right, y'all? That's part three.